Good evening. I am Molly Wilson, and I'm here to talk about Herbert Spencer, an educator for all. Uh, Mr. Spencer was born in Derby, England. He was um, one of nine children who was the only one to survive past infancy for his parents. So his mother and father felt that he was quite frail and fragile and did not believe that he was capable of going to school with the other children um, based on um, their fear, I think, of losing him also. So he was homeschooled for a period of time with his father. Um, his father, his uncles, his grandfather, all were educators, and uh, Herbert Spencer had a an extreme uh, respect for those that were educators and teachers. His father did suffer some, from some um, mental instabilities, and he uh, ended up losing his teaching job. The family moved um, away from Derby to follow the lace manufacturing trade. Um, this was during the Industrial Revolution, and so there were a lot of textiles. There were a lot of businesses that were booming because of the supply and demand uh, need at the time. Um, that ended um, not long later, uh, around the age of seven, six or seven, they mo the family moved back to Derby. At that time, um, his parents uh, enrolled him in Mr. Mather's day school. Mr. Mather's was very much a traditional teacher. He was uh, believed in rote recitation. Um, he taught the very traditional subjects um, and did so, did so with not a very exciting style. Um, Mr. Uh, George Spitzer, uh, Herbert's father, had made a, a um, an agreement with Mr. Mathers that he would not be punished the same way that the other children were, or disciplined the same way they were. Thus, he became a quite unruly child for Mr. Mathers because he didn't um, enjoy the way that he was being taught, plus he was not very um, excited or engaged in the learning. Um, so. A, about the age of 10, an agreement was made between um, Herbert's father and Mr. Mathers that he would be unenrolled in the day school, and um, he was sent to his Uncle Williams, uh, who was also a teacher, and began studying with him. This was a huge turning point for him because um, his Uncle William believed in experiencing education, experience as a way of learning, um, not um, just memorizing, and he was a huge advocate for science and math in the curriculum. Um, so at that point, um, after the family had moved back to Derby and he had, had begun learning with his uncle, um, the Derby Philosophical Society of that time was a very intellectually important um, arena in England. It was founded by Erasmus Darwin, who happened to be Charles Darwin's grandfather. Um, even though at this time um, Herbert was only 13 years old, he was included and allowed to go to a lot of the events with the Philosophical Society, um, listening to their speakers, listening to the ideas, listening to the conversations that were happening there, along with listening and being a part of conversations with his father and his uncles, um, debating things that were current in that age. Um, one of the biggest things that happened in Herbert Spencer's life, or ideas that he came up with, was survival of the fittest. Um, Darwin had come up, this is Charles Darwin, had come up with the idea basically of natural selection, which was the evolution of um, plants and animals to adapt and change and be able to survive. And Spencer figured if that were available or were to happen with um, plants and animals, why not human beings, why not society, why not economics? And he took that idea and um, kind of made it into um, the idea of the survival of the fittest. He, however, spent a lot of time in his life um, ensuring that he was not linked to Darwin or others' ideas. He believed that the ideas that he came up with were his own. He wanted credit specifically for the things that he developed and the ideas that he came up with. He went as far as even suing some um, publications and journals for linking him with Darwin um, to ensure that he got credit for the idea alone without um, an assimilation from others' ideas. 
one of his statements was, if they, all people, are sufficiently complete to live, they do live, and it is well they should live. If they are not sufficiently complete, they die, and it is well they should die. This sounds very, very harsh, but the real purpose behind this, the survival of the fittest for him, wasn't that certain people should be left behind. It was the fact that he believed that all people should try their very hardest to fulfill their ultimate potential. He thought that if you were successful, it was because you tried. It wasn't something that was just given to you. And if you weren't successful, it was because you failed to try, because you failed to live up to the potential that was given to you from birth. Um, so some of these statements were a little bit misleading in the fact that he didn't want uh, bad things to happen to certain people. He just wanted everyone to try their hardest and to be the best that they possibly could be. So some of Spencer's main ideas was um, included that there should be no involvement in schools by federal or um, the church. He believed that the states should be responsible for education. They should be the ones responsible for making the decisions and for providing for that education. Um, he did not believe that the church should be involved at all um, in forcing indoctrination into a certain specific religion on children uh, just because they were in school. Um, one of his um, more important pushes was what knowledge is of the most worth. He tried to ensure that the things that were being studied were being studied because they produced the best results, not because it was something that was of a tradition. He also agreed with Pestalozzi in that kindness and compassionate um, and compassion were uh, important things for teachers to have, that they were going to get the best results from students if they taught with kindness and compassion and learned their students and learned their needs. He was part of curriculum reform. He wanted there to be a purpose to the curriculum, not out of tradition should students uh, receive um, subjects being taught. He did not study uh, Latin, he did not study Greek, he didn't study the arts. He felt that those were things that could be done in the leisure time and in somebody's um, idle time, but that um, the important subjects were the things that were going to better someone to help them in their careers in helping create a better society. And he was also a huge advocate for science curriculum and, and the push into science and mathematics importance in the curriculum of uh, children of that day. Later in life, he also was a proponent for teacher candidate training improvements. He felt that the teacher schools were not producing the kind of students that were prepared to be the uh, excellent teachers that we should have for our, our children. Um, and so he worked very hard to try to bring that to light and bring attention to uh, reforming the requirements for a person being certified as a teacher. And then he also uh, pushed for the improvements for disabled children's education. So again, um, it wasn't that he wanted people that he, that that weren't, did not have the same uh, aptitudes as others to be left behind. He wanted everyone to have the ultimate um, opportunity to uh, to see their p potential fulfilled. Um, and so he very much was a misunderstood um, educator in the ideas and the ways that he kind of presented things, but he was a very important, impactful person in education.